let's look at the side effects of succinothonium. I'm going to give you a quick and easy way to remember 14 side effects of succinothonium. Now you would think with so many side effects, sucks really does suck, doesn't it? But we must remember that there are still great benefits to, to using succinothonium. Um, the fact that, it, that you can get optimal intubating conditions within 45 to 260 seconds. And then also the fact that it has a very short duration of action of usually about 5 minutes. So these are two significant benefits and none of the other muscle relaxing agents really beat that. So that's why we still use succinothonium. But we need to be aware of the side effects so that we can use this safely. So let's look at it. We're going to use this little pathway to help us remember and strewn along the path are little pictures as clues. Now, just a little caveat. The way that we're going to remember the side effects is one side effect is going to lead into the next. But that does not necessarily mean that it is the mechanism of action for the next side effect. Okay? It's just a way for us to link the side effects together that we can remember them. But what I'm explaining here does not necessarily mean that it's the mechanism of action. Okay. So first of all, if we start along our path up at the top left hand corner here, we see there's a little double stranded helix of DNA. And that is to make us think of the pharmacogenomic side effects of succinothonium, which are malignant hypothermia and scoline apnea. Scoline being the other name for succinothonium. Okay. Now if we continue along our path, we see a little muscle here. And that little muscle, we're going to think about malignant hypothermia. And what does malignant hypothermia do to your muscles? It makes them contract uncontrollably. And it can contract to such an extent that you can actually get rhabdomyolysis or breakdown of the muscle cells. Now not all patients are going to develop rhabdomyolysis, but most patients do complain of muscle aches and pains after they received scoline. And that is because every single muscle cell in the body was fasciculating and depolarizing and it gives the patient a feeling as if they were hit by a truck. So many patients complain of muscle aches and pains. Okay, so that's our fourth side effect. Now going back to, to the concept of rhabdomolysis, if we think about rhabdomolysis, the cells are breaking down. The cells are releasing certain things into the bloodstream. Now we're going to first continue along this top path and you can see that we're going to end up with some kind of kidney side effect up here. That's our next little clue. Okay, And we also see there's a little potassium um, picture here. So, so one of the side effects is going to involve potassium. So when those little cells break up, what is released? The first thing that is released is myoglobin. And that myoglobin is filtered in the kidneys and ends up in the urine, giving us myoglobinuria. But these myoglobin molecules can actually clog up the kidneys. So our next side effect that we can think about is then kidney failure. So succinothonium can give us myoglobinuria and it can give us kidney failure. The next thing that can happen when any cell lyses or breaks up is that it releases potassium. Remember, potassium is the main intracellular ion, whereas sodium is the, mo the main extracellular ion. Um, so when a cell breaks up, it releases potassium. So one of, this, one of the next side effects of succinothonium is therefore hyperkalemia. Okay, now this hyperkalemia may not be significant in an otherwise healthy patient. Um, if, and if you have a normal or a low normal potassium level, a slight increase of about 0.5 is not going to make a big difference um, in your overall potassium levels. But there are some patients who are more at risk for hyperkalemia. And these are burns patients, uh, more than 24 hours old um, extensive burns, and also patients um, who've had spinal cord injuries, more than 72 hours after a spinal cord injury. They are more at risk for hyperkalemia, so we need to avoid succinothonium in those cases. So we continue along the path, and as we continue, we see there's a little heart picture. And the hyperkalemia links with the heart picture because what does hyperkalemia do to the heart? It can cause arrhythmias. Okay, so the next side effect of um, scoline or succinothonium is cardiac arrhythmias. 
what kind of cardiac arrhythmias. And basically, you, you can get anything. You can get tachycardia, which is often related to malignant hypothermia. The hyperkalemia, if it is significant, can give you ventricular tachycardias. But most commonly what we see with um, succinothonium administration is bradycardia. Now, I haven't numbered that as a separate side effect because it falls under cardiac arrhythmias, but we're going to use bradycardia to link into our next side effects. Okay, so when the heart slows down, if it keeps on slowing down, eventually it's going to stop and then you get cardiac arrest and death, which is our next side effect of succinothonium. Okay, so scary stuff. Back to bradycardia. So bradycardia is a decrease in your heart rate. And that happens because succinothonium is basically two molecules of acetylcholine joined together. And acetylcholine is the main neurotransmitter for the parasympathetic nervous system. And the parasympathetic nervous system is your rest and digest nervous system. So if you're going into a restful state, your heart rate goes down. Similarly, what else goes down? Your blood pressure. So you get hypotension. Okay. Now, just going back to the parasympathetic nervous system link, that's going to be our next little brain bridge to the next side effect. So we said parasympathetic nervous system is our rest and digest nervous system. So now we're going to look at something that has to do with digestion. Okay. So... The next side effect is increased salivation, because if you're going to digest some food, you need some saliva to lubricate things and to start digesting the food, right? And after that, you're going to swallow the food, and then the stomach is going to start working. So you are going to get increased gastric pressure. Okay, so these are the next two side effects of um, succinothonium. Increased salivation, increased secretions, and increased um, gastric tone. Okay. And then for the last two side effects, we are going to use the, the link of something being increased. Okay, so and if we follow along the top part of the path, we see something related to the eyes is being increased. And that is um, that we can get increased intraocular pressure. And then if we follow along the bottom path, we see our little clue here is the brain. So what could that be? Well, raised intracranial pressure okay and there we have it 14 side effects of succinothonium well done i really hope that this will make it easy for you to remember the 14 side effects try to write them down in this little path um, format and see if it makes it easier for you